Good afternoon and uh, thanks Pradima for those kind words and thanks for inviting me to come here and <coughs> share my thoughts uh, with all of you. I would begin with uh, two individuals who generally inspire me for these uh, thoughts of uh, ecological approach towards urban planning and one of them is uh, of course as I say extraordinary green human of the 19th century Charles Darwin who told us about the ecology and also in a way scientifically guided us towards the including ecology even in the urban environment. And of course our own Gandhiji who was a green human who inculcated the ideas of humanity and brought even looking at whole urban scenario at a very human level. When we talk about ecological sensitivity, we use the word green. And we also talk about green cities and things. So which color is my city? And these are the few images of Bangalore city from air. I'm sure they are the same for any metro city in our country. They look sometimes uh, good at ground level, but at upper level, they are dry very, very almost like barren habitat supposed to be for human beings. And then we have colors at ground level, which are very vibrant. Which color do we like? Yes, we always like green color. But in green, we have various hues. And which green do we like? Just look at the various hues that we have in greens. And then what you see around us. Sorry. We see these greens also. Some of them are agricultural green. Some of them are golf course greens. Some of them are topiary green, garden green. Some of them are terraces, tea states. You go a little out and you see natural greens. Some of them are aquatic greens. Some of them are mangroves. Some of them are evergreen forests. And some of them are really most wonderful ecosystems. Looking at these greens, we always started thinking about greenhouse effects. And then we started developing the architects, planners, green buildings, green cities, and this is the appearance we give to most of our urban environments today all over the world. What can we make to make our city really green, I would say? Terminology of green and sustainable is being used very loosely, I believe. I think it's more to green and more to sustainable than what we are generally today looking at. And I look at it as town planning and the making of cities on a larger and uh, so what could be a larger statutory strategy? A sustainable and equitable development model with holistic approach. Ecological, where soil, energy, air, water, biodiversity are considered. Environmental, where pollution, sewage, waste management is considered. And then the social, where cultural identity of individuals staying in the city, public services, Equity is considered, and of course, economical, because everything depends on economy. At the same time, the intimate strategy, which will consider environmental issues, love for nature, which we really don't talk about. Planners don't talk about love. They talk about plans. Proactive role by regional community, participatory role. Three R's, reduce, reuse, recycle. Education awareness, which comes then the system uh, gets developed by own individuals and individual practices. There is a green culture and green ethics also. Chris mentioned about bicycle tracks and pedestrians. And we, if you look at the pyramid, but inverse pyramid, pedestrian, bicycles, public transit, it goes like that. How many of us are ready to follow this? Are we ready to take green ethics in our individual day-to-day -day life 
follow green ethics in our individual day-to-day -day life. Are we really prepared to take care of this world? And when the dilemma comes, we always talk, isn't someone else working on the eco-crisis? Can I make a difference? These questions come to all of us, all of us mind. And then the story between planners, architects, town planners, it's a very well-known story of everybody, somebody, anybody, and nobody. And nothing really happens. So what can we do? And my approach, since the topic today given to me is ecological sensitivity, I'm going to restrict towards that because there are many other e complex issues which keep coming. So holistic strategy for ecological sensitivity, sensitive city planning. What is holistic approach? And I believe in most of our cities, everybody is talking about 50% land being 50% population, being urban population and all that. Still, I believe that removing regional imbalance could be perhaps the actual solution to improve our cities and improve even our rural areas. And then I look at multidimensional strategy. Why not have a model village concept, eco-development of at least one village in every taluka of the states, a vibrant town concept, economic development of at least one town in every district of states, and the decentralization concept, development of satellite cities around the major cities in states. And then, yes, metropolis are go is going to remain, so why not have a sustainable metropolitan concept? I think if we look at the issue in this holistic manner, I think that the issue of metro cities, the solution to the problems of eco our metro cities lies in the villages. Coming back, there are many issues, but again, I'm going to consider only biodiversity as a part of ecological solution towards the city planning. And there was a National Biodiversity Strategic Action Plan, which was prepared by Central Government of India. And I contributed a paper, a chapter on this, on urban biodiversity. So I am moving around that chapter to narrate what could be perhaps approach towards making the, making the city eco-sensitive. Urban biodiversity, what is urban biodiversity? And if you look at urban evolution, it started with the nomadic man settling on the river banks, on the fertile lands. And the first uh, urbanization process perhaps started that with uh, onslaught on forest because he wanted to create agricultural lands. That's the process of urbanization, same, it continues even today. What Bala just now showed, a road, in the agricultural lands, agricultural lands vanishing, and the de uh, development coming up. The same issue is going on. And if you look at the what Barbara Ward says some years ago, or even uh, Rachel Carson said in 60s about the environmental issues and the ecological issues, it's true even today. All our city people crowded and living in miserable conditions they are actually depending on air, water, and soil. And we are not really taking care of those. What is the indicator, biodiversity indicator for a healthy urban environment? Natural flora and fauna to begin with, urban wetlands. There are many adverse things that happen because of land use changes that are taking place. And those have to be considered. Many exotic things start coming up because of sudden changes in the land use they have to be taken care of. Some of the solutions could be urban nature parks. And the most important is looking at the transition. We have a metropolitan city. On the border, we have suburbans. Then we have a mix up of urban areas and rural areas, what we call, I call urban, and then the rural areas. Can we see the transition together and see that all of these transition, transitional sectors can complement and help each other? In urban planning in India, we have policy planning, which is generally done by planning commissions, both at uh, central government and state government levels. Then we have several planning authorities. 
then we have statutory authorities. We control or try to keep control on the developments. And all these development basically in India is designed by all of us, planners, architects, engineers, town planners, urban planners. There are people who are staying and people generally are represented by various voluntary organizations, so their issues can be also tackled and considered in the urban planning process, again, in the transition, transitional sectors. When we look at this, what should be the strategic planning evolving around urban biodiversity? The exercise can be efficient and successful if everyone involved opened up their minds. And when I say opened up their minds, it's quite simple. Those who are planners, if I'm a town planner, can I broaden my view and become a regional planner? If I'm an architect, can I again broaden my views rather than 30, 40, or 80, 60 site and become a little bit of a town planner or consider the sensitive issues of the neighborhood? If I'm a landscape architect and designing a park, can I broaden my view and look at the ecology and become a landscape ecologist? So I look at the ecology of the whole city. There are general planning norms. Now I'm coming to this because what happens is that many times when we talk about these various issues, particularly environment and ecology re related issues, they are appreciated, they are commended, everybody claps, everybody applauds, and as the story of nobody, everybody, somebody, nothing happens. And I believe in our country, or maybe everywhere in the urban setup, if there are development control norms, the terms used by most of us, FSI, FAR, density, if they are there in the development control norms, then you are forced to follow them. I'm going to suggest a strategy to consider urban biodiversity and ecology also be made part of those development control norms so that they are being followed and made mandatory for every planner, every architect, every individual to follow. 